Hi everyone, I'm DJ Spree. Sometimes I DJ under the name Paul Knox. I've gotten some questions from DJ friends lately asking how do I make my basic DJ edits, as well as some other basic record box tips that we're going to cover in today's tutorial. So the first question you might be asking is why even create these basic DJ edits? Perhaps you rely on hot cues to remix your tracks live, but you might be playing somewhere that you can't use hot cues, either on an older CDJ, such as the CDJ 2000 Nexus that only has three hot cue options, or perhaps the equipment you'll be playing on has broken hot cue buttons. You also might want to stretch out the intro or the outro of a track without relying on an auto loop cue. Some assumptions that I'm going to make before we get started is that you already have Ableton Live and Rekordbox. You also have at least some of the basics down of how to use Ableton Live. There are other really good Ableton Live tutorials on how to get started if some of the stuff that I'm going to cover today seems too advanced. So the first step is we're going to make our edits using hot cues in Rekordbox. We're going to use this to outline what we want to do. If you don't have a controller, you can use the numbers on your keyboard as effectively a performance pad. Keyboard numbers 1 through 5 are performance pad A through E on deck 1, and keyboard numbers 6 through 0 is performance pad A through E on deck 2. Let's get started. So here we have two tracks. We're going to focus on the Resurrected track by Impulse Riders. Now I've already set up some hot cues based on how I want this track to be mixed into the other track. And that hot cue is at the point of B, I want it to jump to hot cue C. At the point of hot cue D, I want it to jump to hot cue E. And so I'm going to do that manually on the keyboard in just a moment. Um, the way you create hot cues is very simple. You just make the track marker wherever you want it to be and click right where you want the hot cue to be. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is make sure that you have Quantize turned on on the decks in record box. And that's the little cue icon right here. You just want to make sure that that's red. That way, when you hit your hot cue, it will snap right to the beat and it will sound seamless as you're using the hot cue pad. You also want to probably set your hot cue values to one beat. You can do that under settings and then under controller and then others. And right here where it says quantize hot cue enable, I have that set to one. All right, so let's go back to our tracks. So let's take a look at how I want this track to sound. For the resurrected track, as it's mixing into this track binary worlds, I want to skip all the way to the middle of the track as I'm mixing it in. And then I want to skip the softer part of the breakdown and go right into the higher energy piece. And that's what we're going to create our DJ edit on is this track resurrected. Here's how it'll eventually sound. Now I'm just using my keyboard and mouse to do the mixing here. It's going to be a little dodgy, but you'll get the idea. Again, if you want, you can skip ahead a couple minutes in the video just to get to the part where I'm doing the editing in Ableton. So I think you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve by making our DJ edit of Resurrected. But before we jump over into Ableton, I do want to show you something about looping within Rekordbox. So there's two ways to auto-trigger a loop in Rekordbox. The first is that if you're using Rekordbox with a controller, you can have an auto-triggered loop as a hot cue. You can also auto-trigger a loop as a memory cue. You can have one of each activated within each track. 
However, if you're using a CDJ or an XDJ player, you can only auto-trigger a memory loop. CDJs and XDJs will ignore auto-triggered loops that are set as hotkey loops. Those have to be, again, as memory loops. So let's jump back over to Rekordbox and take a look at what I have set as hotkey H. So right here, I have it set to a 32-beat loop. In Rekordbox, I can click on this orange loop icon to set it as an active loop. What that means is as the track is playing along, when it hits hot Q H, it will auto-trigger that loop. But again, that's only going to work in record box. Let's say I want this to auto-trigger that loop if I'm using a CDJ or an XDJ. The way we do that is we go under the memory queue section within record box in performance mode. You can also do this in export mode. We're going to set a 32 beat loop right here where H is. Now we're going to click on the memory icon. And you can see that there's this little orange loop icon that will set it as an active loop as a memory queue. Now, if I export this track onto a USB and I plug it into a CDJ or an XDJ, when the track gets to this point, it will auto trigger that loop. All right. So now we're going to get started on making our edit. The first thing that we want to do is write some things down. We want to note the BPM of our track to make it easy to edit on grid and Ableton. And we want to write down the timestamps of our hot cues in the track that we want to edit. This is just going to make the whole process a lot faster. All right, so let's take some notes about our track. So the first, on Resurrected, it's 175 beats per minute. We know that we want to go from QB at 21 seconds out to QC, which is at 2 minutes and 22 seconds. We also know that we want to go from QD, which starts at 3 minutes and 28 seconds, out to QE, which is at 4 minutes and 1 second. We also want to take QH and we want to loop that for 32 beats. So I'm going to take, I'm going to make a note for myself that at six minutes and 13 seconds, we want to effectively add one 32 beat loop. So next we're going to open Ableton and load our track. We're going to create a blank audio track in Ableton. We're going to drag our, we're going to drag our audio file into Ableton. We're going to set the BPM in the top left corner. And then we're going to remove a tiny little bit of the intro that's in almost every track that I've ever put into Ableton. So that way our edits are on grid. So now that we've got Ableton open, I hit tab on my keyboard so that I can see the waveform editing view. And I'm going to delete all of the open tracks except for just one. We only need one track that we're going to do that we're going to use for this edit because it's going to be very basic. Now we're going to drag our track into Ableton. And we want to get it all the way snapped to the very first beat within this track. Next thing I like to do is click and drag on the right hand side just to bring this waveform all the way open so I can really see what I'm working on. And now we want to set the BPM of this track. So if you recall, per our notes, the track is 175 beats per minute. So in the upper left hand corner, it says 120. We're going to click on that and we're going to change it to 175. Now, because we've dragged our track in, it's effectively a sample. We want to make sure that time warping is turned off. We don't want the, we don't want Ableton to warp this track at all. We want to leave it as is in the default settings. So where it says warp, just make sure that that's not highlighted. Now we need to remove the very tiny little bit of intro at the front of this track. Otherwise, as we're making our edits, we would end up snipping off parts of the beat and it wouldn't snap quite properly on the grid. So let me show you how to do that now. As you highlight in the sample area in the bottom part of the screen, you'll see a little magnifying glass over this over the second arrow. If you click on the magnify where the magnifying glass is and you drag down, it'll start to zoom in. And if you drag right, you can move the sample to the right. I like to zoom pretty far in to where I can still see this little triangle. Next, I'm going to click on this bottom triangle. And I'm going to stretch it all the way over to right where the track starts. And I like to get this as perfect as I can. So I'm going to keep zooming in. And we're going to keep moving this little triangle over. And we're going to keep zooming in. So that's as far zoomed in as I can get. And I want this triangle to be right at the point where I can see the waveform starting, where I can see the music starting. Now we're all set up and we can start our editing. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn the metronome on in Ableton, just so that we can make sure that it's snapped to the grid properly before we start making our edits. Then we're going to make our edits starting from the right of the waveform working to the left. Otherwise, our timestamps won't match up. Then we're going to highlight the sections that we want to delete. We will delete them. We will move the waveform over. And then at the very end, I'll show you how to replicate that loop that we had at that hot cue H. So back into Ableton. 
So back in Ableton, we're going to turn the metronome on. The metronome is this little two dot icon in the upper left hand corner. And all it's going to do is help us to make sure that the beats are on grid. So click on metronome. And so now when we hit play, we should hear the metronome and all of the beats should line up properly. And they do that click, 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 click. That's the metronome. So now if we turn the metronome off while we're doing our editing, we don't have to worry. And we know that all of our edits are gonna be perfectly on the grid. If I hit play again, you won't hear the metronome any longer. There we go. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is create one 32-beat loop at 6 minutes and 13 seconds into the track. So if I click at the top above the waveform, I'll see a little magnifying glass icon. I can click and drag just to, to zoom that in. Dragging down, zooms in, dragging up, zooms out. I can drag left and right. But we want to get to 6 minutes and 13 seconds, which is right about here. And 32 beats would take us right to about here on the track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight where I want the loop to, to end. We're going to split that part of the track. We're going to move the remaining part of the track way out. We're going to go back to 6 minutes and 13 seconds, which is right here. We're going to highlight this section. Now, a really easy thing to do if we just want to create effectively a loop is on a Windows keyboard, if you hit Control D, That'll duplicate this one time for every time that I hit Control D. So all I'm going to do is hit Control D, boom. Effectively, all that that's done is looped that section. It's it's a, a manual loop, if you will. The track would just continue to play through, but it replicates that auto loop function if I just wanted it to loop one time. I can take now the remaining waveform, drag it over so that it connects with the part that we looped. We'll take a quick listen. I'm just going to zoom in again on the waveform. If I want to listen to a specific part of the track, all I have to do is hover my cursor over the part that's just above the waveforms, and you'll see a tiny little speaker icon show up. Wherever I left click, we'll start playing the track. So let's see how this sounds. Excellent, sounds pretty seamless. All right, so now let's work our way through the rest of the track. So we know that hot QE at four minutes and one second, we're going to need to make a split, and we're gonna cut out the part between four minutes and one seconds and three minutes and 28 seconds. So again, if I mouse over this part above the waveforms and zoom out a little bit, we're gonna drag this over. We're looking for four minutes and one second, which is right about here. So here's the four minute and one second part. Let's zoom that in a little bit just to make sure. Yep, that looks about right. Again, we're gonna right click. We're gonna hit split, which just snips the waveform in half right there. I'm gonna zoom out. And the part that we wanna start our cut or start the, the, the jump from is from three minutes and 28 seconds. Let's go back over into Ableton, zoom in. Yep, right about here is 3 minutes, 28 seconds. And again, it's already perfectly aligned to this grid, which makes it really easy because as I'm clicking through these, these sections, it's snapping right on the, the grid perfectly. So I know that when I split this, it's going to be split exactly the way that we want. So I've got my cursor set. I'm going to right click, hit split. I'm going to zoom back out. We're going to delete this section of the track. Now we need to move all of our stuff that we've created so far over so that it connects to the part of the track that we just cut out. So all I have to do is, is select by clicking on the title bar at the top here, the first part of the sample, I'm going to hold down shift. I'm hitting the next title bar and the next title bar. because we have three cuts at this point. We're now going to drag it over and it'll just snap right to that, right to the part that we had cut out. And now let's see how it sounds. Excellent. That was exactly what I was hoping to hear. So I'm going to zoom back out. And if you remember, we also wanted to have that jump from hot QB at 21 seconds to hot QC at 2 minutes and 22 seconds. So we've zoomed in on 2 minutes and 22 seconds. Right about here is where I want the next part of the edit to begin. So I've clicked. I'm going to right click. I'm going to split this part of the track. We're going to zoom back out. Now we're going to scroll over to, to 21 seconds per our notes. And so we'll zoom back in. We'll find the 21 second point, which is right about here. We're going to right click, split. We're going to zoom back out. And again, this is the next part of the track that we're removing. So I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard. I'm going to highlight by holding shift each of the next pieces of the waveform. I'm going to move them over. 
And now we're just gonna give it a quick listen to make sure this part is the way we wanted it to sound. Yep, that's how we wanted it to sound. So now we're pretty much done. One thing to make sure is up at the top, before we export this audio, we wanna make sure that these little counters say one, one, one. To do that, you just hit this little square stop icon. Out of habit, I just click it a couple times. Now we're ready to export our track. Our DJ edit is complete. To do that, go up to file, hit export audio video. We're gonna render the track as master. And all you have to do is hit export. And so now we're gonna rename this Impulse Riders Resurrected. And now it's just exporting the WAV file. This just takes a couple seconds. And now we're done doing our DJ edit. So at this point, I'm gonna close out of Ableton. I'm not gonna save this because as you saw, it only took us a few minutes to create that DJ edit. I do wanna make some notes here as well for you. If you wanna layer some of the track together, let's say that there was a quiet part of the breakdown that you wanted to layer with that more exciting part, just be sure to watch your levels if you're doing multi-track editing within Ableton. Otherwise, you might clip and cause some unintended distortion. In order to get around that, you can add a limiter effect to your master channel. But again, I'm gonna assume that you have some experience with Ableton and you know what I'm talking about there. You also could do some sidechain compression to help prevent clipping from one of your tracks to the other, but that's a video for a whole nother day. I'm not going to get into what sidechain compression is right here. If you want me to create some tutorials on how to do edits with layering some sounds, drop a comment below and I'll make a follow-up video to this one. All right, so we showed you how to export your track from Ableton as a new WAV file. If you convert it to an MP3, I recommend using software like KID3 to copy the ID3 tags from your original track into your new track, and then just edit the title to add in DJ Edit so that you know that this one's different from your original track. And then remember to import your new track back into Rekordbox. And that's all there is to it. Just a few minutes to create a really simple DJ edit. Thanks so much for your time. If you like this, please give us a like and subscribe. Thanks.